According to the Declaration on the Right to Development put forth by the UN's General Assembly, the right to development is a comprehensive economic, social, and cultural political process which aims at the constant improvement of the well-being of every country's entire population and of all individuals on the basis of their active, free, and meaningful participation in development and in the fair distribution of the resulting benefits. The significance of the Declaration on the Right to Development was its recognition that development is multidimensional and must take human rights into account as well as economic factors. However, this new stance necessitated the adoption of a new approach to international assistance. The General Assembly's creation of the Declaration on the Right to Development in 1986 may be understood as a continuation of the UN's work regarding human rights up until that point. Tasked with maintaining international peace and security after World War II, the UN established the Commission on Human Rights with the hope that by emphasizing human rights, it could potentially head off international conflict. At the time of its creation, the Declaration on the Right to Development reflected the opinion of developing, recently decolonized countries who had gained membership into the UN. The Declaration calls for international policy which respects the sovereignty and agency of developing countries by letting them determine how they develop socially, politically, and economically. This new approach was a major shift for the international community, which formerly had focused on assisting primarily through foreign economic development. Since its acceptance into mainstream development thought, the rights-based approach has become policy in major agencies like UNICEF, UNDP, and the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, along with countless NGOs. While many development groups now champion the rights-based approach, critics question whether its rhetoric has been accompanied by any real change, or if, as some scholars put it, it is simply old development wine served up in new rights-based bottles. Therefore, in analyzing the success of the rights-based approach in implementing the principles of the Declaration on the Right to Development, it is useful to reference a standard which measures human rights progress which embodies the spirit of the Declaration. One such standard is that of the Millennium Development Goals, or MDGs. The UN's Millennium Development Goals are concerned with measuring a country's progress towards eliminating eight global societal problems which must be addressed before human rights can fully be realized. An individual country's progress relevant to the MDGs gives a concrete point of reference when talking about what is and isn't working within that country's development program, much like how GDP acts as a barometer for the health of a country's economy. And although the MDGs are seen by some as too idealistic, they nevertheless give reliable data, making it possible to come to informed conclusions about where policies are or are not succeeding. Most MDGs are concerned with lifting people out of the worst levels of poverty, a goal which requires the provision of basic needs such as access to clean water and stable supplies of food, and making sure that each person has access to basic education, health care, contraception, and gender equality. A fair number of these goals have already been met. By 2030, it is estimated that 5 billion more people will have moved into the world's middle class compared to 2 billion today. And if the economic development seen in the past 15 years continues, extreme poverty will have been eliminated, helping a billion more. What this means in terms of the right to development is that citizens of developing countries will be filling roles of greater responsibility at local government levels, and as such will need to be recognized by the international community as rights holders who are agents of their own change and development, not objects of charity. This new role for citizens of developing countries is beneficial. When confronted with issues such as climate change, which threatens global stability with droughts and severe weather patterns, solutions must be found within the context of a population's economic, societal, political, and cultural systems if they are to be successful. This re-emphasizes the need for a notion such as that of the right to development, for without it, no approach towards confronting the world's problems will be successful.